Okay, I want to take a moment to just talk a little bit about the brain and mindfulness, because there's a lot of talk about the neuroscience underlying mindfulness, and I'm going to try to make it pretty simple and straightforward. So here we go. Um, this is my little model of the human brain here. And the brain stem um, is represented by my wrist, and this is the part that we have no conscious control over. It just keeps our heart beating and our lungs, you know, working. Then we have this middle region of the brain where the limbic system is, and this is where the stress response, the fight, flight, freeze mechanisms are. And this is a, a, sometimes called the reptilian part of the brain, but this is all about safety. Feeling under attack, our life is threatened, or even psychologically feel like our lives are threatened, um, this part of the brain takes over which leads us to the third part, which is the um, prefrontal cortex. And so this is where everything that we think about of ourselves as human, it's where language, uh, good decision making, all of that part of being human, being able to read and do math, all that stuff. And so this is basically uh, the brain and how it works. And what happens is when we get stressed, we flip our lids, so to speak, and this part of the brain goes offline. And, and the truth is there's obviously a lot of variations. You know, a five bell alarm is, you know, those moments when a mother's able to lift a car up, you know, to save her child's life. But, um, and just being stuck in traffic, most of us might uh, be kind of have a little bit of a stress response. So we have varying amounts of this. And so when you first start practicing mindfulness, you'll be refocusing your brain, and that's what you're supposed to be doing. And each time you do that, the neurons fire once and then again, each time you, you uh, refocus, there's a firing along this line from the prefrontal cortex to the limbic system down here. And I think of it, you may think of it this way, it's, it's probably more of a metaphor than anything, but in the beginning when you first start practicing, there's usually just a very thin like trail, you know, from the prefrontal cortex down to the limbic system. But the more you practice each time with that repetition, you lay a thicker and thicker neural connections between the two and you go from like a little foot trail you know over the Himalayas to a major you know highway that's connecting the two and you begin to have more and more conscious control over this stress response in the beginning you notice it with little things that used to annoy you don't don't set off the stress response anymore and with more and more practice you find yourself better able to manage that stress response no matter what the stressor is that's coming from outside and, and this is particularly important um, with ADHD because in ADHD you can kind of think of it as um, there's always this part of the brain kind of isn't lighting up and that's why we will give stimulants to uh, children who are diagnosed with ADHD because it helps wake this part of the brain up so that they can actually then manage their behaviors better. And so what's exciting with mindfulness and why people are so excited about it is that this practice of um, kind of Focusing your brain and refocusing your brain can actually help those kids learn how to do that without the medication and actually kind of create new brain structures. And it actually does kind of restructure the brain and some of these connections. And there's actually changes in the amount of gray matter. So you get more gray matter in what we call the smart part of the brain. And there's less gray matter in your stress response because you're using it less. And if you're not going to be as stressed, there's less gray matter here and you're going to have more where you are using it.